Oh, man. <laughs> wow. We'll oh. do that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Well, hello and welcome to another video here on AV Forums. Uh, this video is a little bit different to all the other videos that we've done. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a car, not any car. This is the new BMW iX M60, top of the range, fully electric vehicle, and it costs around about £117,000. And if you were to lease this car, you're looking at around about £1,450 per calendar month. So why am I in this vehicle and on the Durham Dales and speaking to you on camera? Well, that's because this car also comes equipped with a Bowers & Wilkins Diamond Surround Sound System. Uh, and that is the purpose of our review today. But having this car, which is not available till mid-2023, I thought it'd be worthwhile just having a little bit of a look around the car and tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, this is a press car which uh, was delivered to me at Bowers & Wilkins uh, when I was down there filming a video and I took the opportunity down there to listen to the 801D4s, um, that's the flagship speaker from Bowers & Wilkins, and listened to a couple of tracks on that and then picked this car up and drove the six hours back to Durham from Bowers & Wilkins. So let me tell you a little bit about the car and then we'll get into the sound system and the full review of that. And Andy Kerr from Bowers & Wilkins uh, was also kind enough to give us a few words on video. We'll cut to that and listen to what Andy has to say as well. So like I say, this is the iX M60, the top of the range model, uh, electric model, built from the ground up, five years in development. And Bowers & Wilkins were involved right from the start in terms of designing the audio system for this. Uh, this is a big car. It is a about the size of an Audi Q8 to give you some kind of reference and it's a love it or hate it design. It looks great in black uh, because it hides those kidneys up the front and of course with it being a, a larger car, uh, an SUV, uh, the kidneys don't feel quite as big, the kidney grills at the front there and they do have operational use so they have functions in there like intelligent sensors, cameras and the radar crews and, and so on. So, yeah, it's a big car. The design is definitely going to split opinion. Uh, but then you come to the performance, and this is obviously the top of the line performance SUV electric, fully electric. So performance-wise, you're looking at 610 horsepower, which is 455 kilowatts. Uh, it will do not to 62 in 3.8 seconds, 1,100 newton meters of torque, or 811 pound-feet. And the battery capacity is 111.5 kilowatt hours with a usable battery of around about 105 kilowatt hours. So it is a big car, it's a big battery and big performance to go with that. So the drivetrain, it uses two BMW M E drive motors and it is four wheel drive. So lots of traction and you need that with it being such a big and powerful vehicle. It also has adaptive two-axle uh, air suspension with electronic dampeners. 
uh, to give you a really nice ride quality. Uh, the only downside I can see with that is the size and weight of the vehicle, obviously taking corners on a B road like we're traveling on at the moment. Uh, the car does tend to roll. It's not very sporty when it comes to driving on B roads, but stick it on an A road or on a motorway and this thing is the lap of luxury as you would imagine. So looking at range, you're looking at around about 348 miles WLTP. Uh, so you can take quite a bit of that in real world terms. But I certainly managed the six hour drive back from uh, Bowers and Wilkins and Worthing back to Durham um, without any real issues. Only one uh, stop there just to, out of interest really, just to uh, charge up the battery again. Just give me a little bit extra range. But I got back home with around about 30% of the battery remaining, which I thought was excellent. Another neat feature is when it comes to steering, uh, it's not the steering wheel. I, um, I don't, I'm not really a fan of this square steering wheel. It's nothing against it. I can see uh, BMW have been go going for a bit of a design flair. Um, it's just usability. I find it a little bit awkward. I'm, I, I'm not too concerned about the, the flat bottom steering wheel. I've had that feature in many cars before, but the square steering wheel just doesn't quite do it for me. But you do have the integral active steering which means that the rear wheels um, up to I think it's 37 miles per hour uh, steer opposite to the front wheels and then above 37 miles an hour uh, they turn in parallel which helps with the stability given such a, a large vehicle and at low speeds it does help you with parking and certainly getting into some of these charger spaces um, with such a large vehicle is a challenge um, so having the cameras on board I really do like that feature as well as the heads up display uh, which we'll show you some video of that I found that incredibly useful especially with the nav uh, that's built in to the system here the entertainment system here uh, the navigation is excellent and it actually puts uh, your information up in front of you so you don't need to look down at the screens at any point in time and that's a really useful feature and one I would certainly like in any future car that I own heads up display is excellent and it does show you when you come up to junctions the entire map to make sure that you are heading off in the correct direction the other thing I do like is the nav system on the main screen because it will show you video from the camera in the front as you come up to junctions so if it's a complicated roundabout um, or a complicated junction and you're not quite sure uh, which turning it is that the sat nav is telling you to take cattle grid uh, you can look at the screen and it will play live video as you come up to that junction and it will overlay directional arrows on that to make sure that you are heading for the correct junction or the correct turn off on your roundabout. So I really like that feature and the tech in this car is fantastic. It's one of the, the big things for me in here uh, was experiencing an EV for the first time. Um, I am very much a petrol head. I've owned a, a lot of fast cars, a lot of cars with big engines and my last four cars uh, were all Mustangs, five litre V8s in various uh, trim levels. The last one being a Mark 1. Uh, one of the features I really do like with the EV is the one pedal driving. And it was a feature that I found after, uh, or well into my uh, weeks long loan of this vehicle. And that's to put the drive mode into B. I don't know what B stands for, but if you put it into B, it gives you the one pedal driving option which is fantastic because I'm coming up to junction now and I'm just gently lifting off the accelerator and we're getting the regen braking and it is a true system. It will come as I get up to this junction to a full stop. I can then have a look around, see that nothing's coming and then just dab the accelerator. And of course you have that instant torque, which electric is well known for. And we're going to demonstrate that in a second. Um, so yeah, I really like that feature as well and think it's uh, an important one for EVs. So let's talk a little bit about the tech. Uh, I've told you all about the car and the features that it does have. Uh, tech wise, uh, we've got two screens in front of me here for this. So there's a 12.3 inch, uh, which is your main instrument cluster. And then the one next to it is a 14.9 inch screen. Um, and that's a touch screen with all your information, your apps, uh, how to get into the system settings and so on. It's all done through the larger screen. It also has wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Um, it has built-in uh, Spotify Connect, um, so you don't have to connect your phone. You can go straight into Spotify, load your account up that way. Um, and yeah, the, the screens are nice and clear. They're easy to read. 
you've got plenty of information in front of you about what's actually happening, what your battery charge is, uh, how many miles you have. There's a predictive area in the middle which tells you based on your driving style and how much you're basically caning the car as to how much range you actually have and it works it out uh, as you drive along. So tech wise uh, it's excellent, it has the BMW iDrive system, it has the gesture controls for volume and track skip and all that kind of thing that you would expect in a top of the range car like this is. So one thing that did worry me about uh, electric vehicles and having this vehicle for a week is the charging of the battery. It's, uh, it's a big car, it has a big battery on board and it needs quite a bit to charge it, at least up to 80%, if not all the way up to 100%. Um, and it's one of these things, I don't have charging facilities at home and it will charge from an AC uh, wall adapter. Uh, you can use it in a 13 amp plug, it will take uh, an absolute age to charge uh, doing it that way. Uh, even a seven kilowatt AC charger, um, it will take in excess of 50 hours to charge on one of those. Um, and then you move to the rapid charging, which is what I have used um, to keep this vehicle topped up while I've used it for the week. And one of the tests that I did was I took it to a Shell Recharge, which was a 175 kilowatt hour charger. And I managed to go from 22% all the way up to 80% in 38 minutes, which I thought was very fast. And it was the time that it took to have a, a cup of coffee and a Twix and, uh, and sit and wait on it charging up and I was ready to go again. So uh, it, it's, it's not cheap doing it that way. I think it came in at about 41 pounds, 42 pounds uh, to do that. But certainly uh, the time that it takes to go from 22% all the way up to 80, I was prepared, quite happy to pay that because I was back on the road again. And it's a different experience to obviously the petrol car, but it's one of these things that um, you've got to get used to if we're gonna move into the EV world. So my general thoughts on the car is that it is a big car, but it does feel a lot smaller once you're sitting inside and, and driving. It has some great tech. Um, I love the heads up display. I really like the nav system with the camera display. Um, it stops you getting lost. The one pedal driving is fantastic. The performance is out of this world, um, straight line performance anyway. Um, it really does help when you're coming out of junctions or roundabouts and so on, um, just to get up to speed uh, nice and quick and you feel safe because of that. Um, if you need to go for an overtake like this gentleman here, uh, you overtake a lot quicker than he did just because of the sheer power uh, that you have available. Um, so overall, it's not particularly a vehicle that I might choose personally, but I can see a big market for this. It's an important car for BMW, this one. Um, it will be a, an executive uh, model. It will be on a lease. It will be a company car, but boy, will it be a company car um, to have because it really does feel like the lap of luxury sat here. And of course, the main event in this is the Bowers and Wilkins audio system and the main reason why we have this car for review today. So before I give you my thoughts on the Bowers and Wilkins sound system, let's catch up with Andy Kerr from Bowers and Wilkins. I sat down with him before I picked the car up and asked him all about this system and how important it is for Bowers. It's, it's one of the most sophisticated systems we've done yet. It's um, got multiple drive units, uh, in fact a total of 30. Although it might seem like overkill, there, there's good reasons for them all to be there. It's got a kind of immersive environment thing going on where it's essentially trying to create more of an envelopment, a 3D type of sound with a combination of headrest mounted drive units and drive units mounted into the ceiling in the headlining. Um, and they work very well to kind of provide a consistent and even spread front to back, but also to sort of take the envelopment up and over you in a way that you wouldn't get in traditional systems where everything's mounted more around the belt line. It's um, that normal belt line kind of configuration is kind of more classically what we've done. So uh, it's a left center, right, an LCRA across the, dry, the, the front of the dash uh, with a pair of diamond tweeters here and here. Again, relatively well placed, quite high up. Um, an aluminum dome tweeter here. And then the, the primary drive units are the Aramid Fiber. Uh, you might call it by another name. It's not our continuum cone, it's an Aramid Fiber cone. And that's not because of any lack of desire to move towards a continuum cone on BMW's part. It's just at the point in the development cycle when that car was being worked on, that was the transducer that they still used. Um, that's complemented by additional low frequency drive units in the doors. And then it's got um, dedicated subwoofers. Um, but again, because of the size of the cabin, and also because of the opportunities that are afforded to us by the fact that it's an EV, 
and therefore it hasn't got a transmission tunnel, uh, we have able to get decent sized subwoofers under each seat. So there are two at the front and two at the back, so four total, four eight inch units, um, complementing the rest of the, the sort of primary array and giving you a very consistent front to back kind of experience. When you go in a lot of cars, hopefully not necessarily ours, but a lot of cars, what you tend to find is that the low frequency is either more towards the rear of the vehicle or somewhat disconnected with what's going on from the front of the vehicle. Here, one of the things you'll notice is the base presence is very consistent through the cabin, and that's because of the, the way the drive unit's been placed, but also because the, the low frequencies are actually across the whole length of the architecture, not just in one particular location, like, for example, a wheel arch. So it's, it's, it's a pretty sophisticated system. It's got a fair amount of power. We don't really dwell too much on power because it's not necessarily the be-all and end-all. It's over 1,600 watts total across all of those transducers, but the more relevant thing is because the system's really well sorted and the drive units are well placed, um, you're getting a very consistent and very transparent sound and also a very powerful sound because uh, the cabin's so well sorted, the structure of the drive units and the doors kind of complement each other, so the system doesn't rattle. It doesn't vibrate. The car's hyper-stiff. I mean, it's built that way. Um, and you really feel that when you play it. Um, there's a sequence that we use as a demonstration sequence and it's been written into the car, into the head unit. So when you first fire it up, and I'm sure you'll have a go at it, um, you can choose various audio modes, you can adjust things as you so wish. But if you put it into the studio mode, the flat mode that we tend to prefer to tune to, uh, there's a button there that allows you to essentially experience the system. And it's, uh, it's encoded in 5.1 FLAC and it will play a bit like a THX trailer or a Dolby Atmos trailer. It'll play about a minute and a half, which kind of showcases all of the different capabilities of the system, including the power of the low frequencies, but also the sort of immersion and the height effects and stuff as well. And it's a pretty good um, showcase, if you like, of what the system has to offer. The other great thing about it is you can use a huge variety of sources to kind of gain access to the content that you want. So it uses Android Auto, it uses CarPlay, it will connect to either of those very easily and wirelessly if you want. It has USB-C, so it will pull content from thumbnail drives if you want to pull content that you've got already. Um, it will support up to flat quality, which is good. Uh, and it's also got embedded Spotify in the head unit directly. So assuming you want a combination of convenience and performance, you can do whatever you want. There's access to everything. And it's, it's a great opportunity for you to kind of fully explore the potential of an audio system rather than just have it going on in the background while you're concentrating on the driving. So as you can see, Andy and the team at Bowers and Wilkins are very proud of what they've put into this vehicle. Like I say, I've had this for over a week now and I had the long drive all the way back from Worthing up to Durham where I live, a six hour journey, and I really put the system through its paces. And I think the biggest compliment I can give the system is that I was searching out music tracks that I know very well in terms of test tracks, but also stuff I hadn't heard for a long time or some real favourites of mine that I, I don't tend to listen to on a regular basis. And just rediscovering my music collection and my musical uh, heroes again on this system so this system it has 30 drivers a 28 channel amplifier it's over 1600 watts in total power um, but none of that really matters when it comes to the performance um, it is a height based system so there are speakers above you uh, speakers just up here on in the headlining uh, the speakers behind me on the headrest there's an eight inch subwoofer under all of the chairs there's also transducers built into the seat which also give you that bass feel through the whole entire uh, seat and at the end of the day that is the area of the sound that you notice the most and it's one of the most impressive things about this system is that there are no rattles there's no creaks the car's been designed from the ground up with this sound system uh, the acoustical space has been examined and and processed and researched and developed and the sound that you get it feels like one massive full frequency speaker with stereo speakers at the side. So you've got your diamond tweeters, you've got a tweeter in the middle for the center channel. Like I say, you've got speakers in the headrests and above you, subwoofers under the seat, transducers in the seat. And the transients in terms of going from loud to quiet, back to loud again, or a bass drum, it's super quick. It works incredibly well, it's so tight. And the other thing is the clarity of the system. You can push this all the way up full volume. It will never distort. There is no distortion whatsoever. Even with vocals and female vocals in particular, 
there is no signs of sibilance or distortion at any point. It sounds crystal clear, it sounds enveloping, and the vocal sits kind of in the middle of where you expect it to sit. And the funny thing is that, you know, in a car, you're sat off to one side or the other, but that effect, that stereo effect, the immersiveness of the sound, you actually feel like you're sitting in a bubble of sound. And there's a couple of tracks which I listened to at Bowers and Wilkins before I picked this car up, and I listened to them on the 801 D4 speakers, which is the, the flagship 32,500 pound a pair speakers um, in the demo room at Bowers and Wilkins, and then purposefully listened to them uh, a number of times in this vehicle. And one of the things that does jump out, and I know it's cliched to say it, but you get very, very close performance-wise to that flagship speaker. You're not gonna get the same uh, experience, but you get pretty close to it. The sound signature is definitely Bowers and Wilkins. And if you've listened to Bowers and Wilkins products like I have over the years, you know what that should sound like. And it was one of the interesting things when I had the sound demo before picking the car up was between the 800s and the 705s, the new S3s, the similarity in the sound characteristics and the sound signature um, is absolutely fantastic. So the two tracks were, and I'm gonna get our surname wrong, but Dominique uh, Fermi, uh, the track is called Birds, and there's like a double bass uh, all the way through, and you don't just hear the double bass in this system, you feel it. And it was one of the things that Sean and Bill picked up on as well, and other people who have been in the car is, how you actually feel that bass coming through you. And it's not a gimmick, it's not boomy, it's not over the top, it's very, very musical. Um, you would think that somebody was standing behind you playing the double bass. Um, that's how uh, involving this system is. It, it's utterly compelling um, and it's hard to get across and you just can't get across on camera um, what that actually feels like. And like I say, you feel the you feel the music, you feel that bass, and it's phenomenal. But it's not just the bass, the treble, uh, the higher frequencies, the mid-range, it's all crisp and sharp and fast, and what you would expect from an incredibly high-end speaker. So this has been an unusual video for us here at AV Forums. It's not our normal thing, um, but we thought it was important. Uh, it's an important vehicle. It's important for Bowers and Wilkins, and in rounding up, my thoughts on the system it's clearly one of the best audio systems i have ever heard uh, in a vehicle from a manufacturer um, i have heard uh, a lot of cars that have been custom uh, designed with audio in mind and so on um, it used to be a big market some of it still goes on but a lot of these vehicles now they all come with everything built in like this and to see bowers and wilkins going to the extent that they have uh, building a system from the ground up along with this EV and the technology involved um, with that so you don't you're not fighting the sound of an engine um, it's an EV you don't get that you only get the road noise from the tires and the wind and being able to cancel that out and have your your sound quality as, as crisp and as clear and as dynamic as it is in this vehicle is phenomenal and it's the fact that you also feel the audio even at low volumes it's not gimmicky, it's, it, it places you right in the middle of, of your music. Um, and like I say, it's one of the best, if not the best systems I've ever heard in a vehicle. The dynamics are absolutely stunning. The clarity is absolutely stunning. And if you are lucky enough uh, to be in a position to order an iX, uh, whether it's the M60 or one of the other models, um, take that options box. Take the options box for the Bowers and Wilkins sound system because you will not be disappointed. Um, you don't have a roaring V8 up front, you're in an EV. So what's the next step? Have a world-class hi-fi system in your car. And I've, I, 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 I'm not gonna like giving this car back, not just from you know the luxury point of view and having this luxury motoring uh, and, a, and an EV and experiencing all that, but the sound system as well. I just know that, um, it's going to be a long time before I have a sound system in a vehicle that sounds as great as this does. And, um, you know, that is my opinion. Bowers and Wilkins are not paying me for this. I do appreciate the fact that I've been loaned this vehicle, but uh, the opinions here are all my own, which you would expect 
um, from me and from AV Forums. Um, and I'm genuinely hand on heart, this is one of the best audio systems in a vehicle I've ever heard. And if you ever get a chance to hear it, then please do. So that wraps up our unusual video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to see us uh, tackle subjects like this and get more vehicles in and listen to the OEM systems, like I say, they're all built into these vehicles now. If you want us to explore that, find out which ones are the best, if it's worth ticking that options box when you're ordering your new vehicle, then do leave your comments in the description and the comment section below. Um, if you're watching on AV forums and you're in the forum, then leave us a comment under the video in the forums. Leave us your feedback. Let us know if you want us to do more of this. Um, and I'm sure we can push the manufacturers to loan us the vehicle so we can put them through their paces. But I think BMW are onto something with this car. It's going to be an important car for them in the luxury uh, executive market space that it's aimed at. And the sound system uh, from Bowers and Wilkins, they need to be congratulated. It's one of the best, if not the best, uh, audio system I've ever heard in, in a car. So well done. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, then please do consider subscribing to the channel and leave the video a like. And we'll see you in our next video. Mm -hmm.